Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest webinar with Laser and Skin Surgery Center of New York. Today, you are tuning in to hear about skin tightening and cellulite, two of the most common conditions that patients come in asking us about and that we have a lot of treatments for. So as one of our most renowned and prestigious physicians here, um, he offers a number of, of treatment options for both of these conditions. Cellulite is actually a lot more common than you might think. Nine out of every 10 women experience cellulite. And we have a number of treatments from Selfina to Quo to Rasonic that Dr. Shelton's gonna teach us about. And then also we have a number of lasers and devices that can help provide smoother, tighter, and a more lifted appearance. While we do have board certified plastic surgeons on our team, Dr. Shelton today is gonna to focus on the non-surgical skin tightening options we have. So without uh, further ado, let me go ahead and introduce you to the man himself, Dr. Ron Shelton. Dr. Shelton is a board certified dermatologist at LSSC NY. He has close to 30 years of experience. He has lectured all over nationally and internationally. He has published many peer reviewed journal articles and written chapters in medical textbooks. He's also authored two books on Botox and liposuction and was just recently won again, the best doctor in America by Castle Connolly and New York Magazine's top doctors. So Dr. Shelton is an expert in all things dermatology from cosmetics, like we're talking about today, but he's also a Mohs surgeon. So Dr. Shelton, take it away. Thank you very much, Risa. I'm so happy to be here and I'm glad that all of you are giving up your personal time to sit hopefully relaxing and watching this webinar. You know, so many of my patients come to me to improve their cellulite and tighten their loose skin wherever on the body. So I wanna to try to separate fact from friction tonight and go over what has worked for us and also what isn't working. So first of all, it's important to differentiate on the body, what is cellulite and what is loose skin? As we are illustrating here with this mattress, mattress buttons are held down in the fabric as are cellulite dimples by these vertical collagen bands. And as Risa said, nine out of 10 women or more have cellulite and certainly men do too, but the cellulite is built differently. The most common areas are the buttocks, the thighs and the abdomen. Lax skin or laxity from looseness typically manifests as these horizontal grooves on the posterior thighs can be on the front of the thighs. Very common, we see bunching up of skin right above the inner knee, very common in this diagonal that I'm showing you. But we get lax skin on our forehead that creates the eyebrows and eyelids to sag. We have cheeks that fall and create a jowl over the jawline. We have necks that start to hang down like the turkey. We have the upper arms, what we call bat wings. And then of course, pendulous abdomens or just thin skin that becomes looser. The back, we can see folds that are unfortunately exacerbated by certain clothing, bra straps, t-shirts, and then buttocks. Buttocks can fall, creating grooves here as well, and the thighs that I mentioned. So with these multiple bands, it turns out, affecting one dimple, we have to treat the area as a region. That one dimple can't just be spot treated. There is no permanent cure for cellulite. It's an ongoing condition. It can be exacerbated at times by different scenarios. For some people, it's increasing weight. Others, it's losing weight. Even a jarring motion like jogging on asphalt repetitively might create some of these signs more visible than if we didn't have those activities. So new dimples could form after treatment. 
we expect to do maintenance treatment with whatever treatment has been shown to improve cellulite in that individual. Minimally invasive treatments, meaning it is invasive, but minimally, will definitely have more side effects and more downtime. We're talking about bruising, possibly, soreness, maybe numbness in certain areas, and for some people, not enough improvement to warrant going through such treatment. So if we see on this illustration, the typical waving nature of the epidermis under a microscope, there are several vertical bands. And the vertical band right here, that's underneath the dimple, if broken, may elevate. And that's been the focus of many different treatments. Well, what are treatments? Way back when, in the late 1990s, there was a treatment from France called Endermology, which was a device that was applied to the skin, usually on the thighs and buttocks. The woman would wear something that looked like spandex, an elastic garment that the machine would have kneading rollers and would then treat the entire leg. But it was just with that mechanical pressure and kneading. Then VelaShape came out to utilize radio frequency along with that kneading. Thermage is pure external radio frequency without the kneading. I found in my practice, having tried multiple versions of VeloShape that I was not as comfortable with that device because sometimes I would see a little arc of the radio frequency energy. It had to be directly in contact with the skin, but going over certain areas, there would be a little gap and we don't want to create burns. Now, VeloShape is a very good treatment done by people who do it a lot but I just, in my hands, wasn't as comfortable doing it as Thermage and other devices to follow. Liposuction, where the doctor is in harvesting fat with the cannula and suction, can also try at the same time to use a little pickle fork and break up those vertical collagen, collagen bands. Again, we're going to have more bruising, swelling, and downtime. Selfina was a very interesting device. I'm going to have an illustration to show you. Minimally invasive, no suction. It does involve local anesthetic, and that's designed to sever the bands. Aveli, which we don't have in our practice, is similar to liposuction, but not in the fact that you're not harvesting fat but you're underneath the skin with local anesthetic with a round rod cannula that has a light at the end, transilluminates the light through the surface. You can see the dimple. You have a little fork that's sharp at the end. And when the dimple is pulled, the dimple is pulled down by pulling on the band, then that band is severed by the surgeon. Quo is an interesting treatment. It is collagenase, an enzyme that breaks down collagen. So each dimple is injected in three sites, three angles. There is a treatment series, 21 days apart for three treatments. There is significant bruising with Quo, which is fine for many people. However, depending on the type of skin and skin of color, that bruising might create a greater risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or darkening that can last for quite some time. And not to mention, it is returning to the practice every three weeks. I had been awaiting for several years for this incredible new technology using similar to ultrasound, but acoustic energy sound waves that break up the scar tissue. Rasana came out with this, interestingly, I am told, it was being used as an adjunct 
to make laser tattoo removal better. The laser tattoo is being targeted by that laser to break up the ink into minute fragments that can get, get carried away by the immune system of their body. And by doing the Rasonic, the theory was to help make the surgeon do yet another pass right after the first with the laser and make it more effective, thereby less number of treatments. One of the study individuals happened to have had a tattoo in the area of cellulite, and they noticed when they were treating her tattoo with the laser and the Rasonic that her cellulite improved. So that's where they started investigating and now have FDA approval. The Laser and Skin Surgery Center of New York is one of 13 practices in the country that has been doing Rasonic. We are providing the company with feedback. We're continuing to explore different protocols. Right now, I wanna show you this video, however. It's very important, regardless of whatever treatment, that we indicate clearly what is cellulite as opposed to linear grooves. We can't treat all of them at one time, and especially two cellulite dimples that are adjacent, we have to treat individually. This is Selfina. There is a suction that is pulling the skin up flat right underneath that plate. A needle goes in a groove and that needle vibrates kind of like a windshield wiper, but very quickly. And that needle is severing or cutting those vertical bands. And another point, we will insert that needle a little further to break up more bands. But you can tell this is invasive, minimally invasive. It's not cutting through the skin. It's a needle hole, but there's local anesthetic. There is bruising. There is a chance of hyperpigmentation. And it certainly can help. So from Rasonic, going from this. We welcome Rasonic to the Laser and Skin Surgery Center of New York. We have been so happy to be able to obtain this device to provide our patients non-invasive treatment for cellulite. It's an acoustic energy, similar to the polar sound, but different. And it hurts minimally. And there is no downtime. No one bruises. There might be little red dots, but there's no downtime. You can go back to the gym that same day. It may require repeated treatments. We're not even sure if it would be six months later. The point is, it's not a series of treatments. It's one treatment. And then we wait to see what improvement we gain. So we're just marking some of the cellulite dimples. Okay. Sure. So prior to the Rasonic, we're putting a gel pad to help the energy go smoothly through the skin. We've been looking forward to Rasonic for a couple of years. Great addition to what we can deliver for our patients to help cellulite at the Laser and Skin Surgery Center of New York. So we're applying an ultrasound gel. We purposely put some audio here because it's a very loud treatment. The acoustic energy is very loud. And our patient wears headphones with music and I am wearing earplugs and headphones. Each dimple gets a minimum of two minutes of treatment. So what I was saying before is it's really amazing for me to see this transition to this with no cutting and no downtime and minimal pain. We're looking at a scale of one to 10 where 10 is the worst pain. The most any patient had mentioned was a five. And that was just temporarily when you're on the one particular spot. 
This is another patient. We use a manufacturer's undergarment that was uh, supplied to us by Quo, actually. And here we have more subtle cellulite, but we certainly have nice improvement, again, with Rasonic. Same patient. Okay, so a, a significant contribution to the aged effect of the skin is a history of smoking. Our age, as we get older, our cells get older, they don't function as well. Our collagen infrastructure model of the protein building of the skin suffers, as well as our elastic tissue from elastic fibers. And there's not enough talk about elastic fibers these days. Sun exposure. Sun ultraviolet A is deeply penetrating and really affects elastic tissue. Volume loss, as we age, we lose fat in the deep compartments that are above the bone below muscle, which then causes deflation of the face as an example, and then the cheek falls creating a gel. We can have a significant loss of weight, either intentionally or post-pregnancy, and that distension over time stretched our skin, and when we lose the volume, the skin can just hang there. There are some medications that people must take for their medical illnesses, such as corticosteroids long-term, that will affect our skin's condition. And there are some very rare genetic deficiencies. Sorry if you're getting some feedback there. Um, there are some rare genetic conditions that can cause damage to the elastic tissue. Risa, are you able to hear me? Yep, we can hear you great. There's no feedback on our end. Perfect, okay. thank you. So what are, what are the facts? We know that no energy-based device can lift as much skin as a plastic surgeon can. But some people are just not ready in their life to go through it. It's not the right time. They want to buy time. They want to stall. They may be afraid of surgery. They may be afraid of long scars or the numbness in an area from surgery. They cannot afford downtime for a week or two or more. They can afford the actual surgery financially and may find that a less expensive, albeit expensive, non-invasive treatment will help them enough to make them happy. And we may want to just maintain as natural an appearance as possible. So for all these conditions, we are going to consider non-invasive treatment. However, as someone is getting older, if there's significant laxity to the skin, they will not get as good a result as someone who's younger or less affected by prior history of smoking, et cetera, et cetera. But as we, let me just put on my pointer. As we have a jowl that starts forming, we get more of this marionette fold. We've deflated the fat, the cheek falls, creating more of the smile fold. We get these muscle bands here. So with some people that are far more worse off than this woman, I will often say, don't do non-invasive, save your money, use it as a layaway or down payment to your eventual surgery. Conversely, there are those who don't yet have the jowl. They look exactly like mom. They don't want to look like mom when they're 30 years older and they want to not rejuvenate, but projuvenate. What can they do to maintain their youthful appearance? And some of these non-invasive treatments are fantastic for that. So we stay ahead of the aging process. Slight sagging that doesn't warrant a facelift can be treated with these treatments. If you're just starting to form the smile folds, if the corners of the mouth are coming down, if we're losing the definition of the jawline, if we're getting crepey skin, those little crinkles, 
face, chest, arms, above the knees, et cetera, non-invasive energy-based devices. So I want to drive a point home. This is skin. This is a microscope slide, histology. Up here, dead skin cells that we exfoliate every day. The living epidermis in this bright pink color with living cells that grow new skin, under which is the dermis, the infrastructure. This is a young patient's biopsy, beautiful collagen, nice and pink and wavy with some blood vessels and other normal findings, little fibroblasts that make collagen. Little wisps of elastic tissue are very thin and not apparent unless you do special stains in the laboratory. Well, take a patient who's been around the block, very sun damaged. We don't have that nice top layer. We have a thinner compact epidermis, but look at this zone. All of this here, this layer, this bluish crumbled fiber is damaged elastic fiber from ultraviolet A sun exposure, okay? Here's the elastic fiber stained with a special stain. Here's the sun damaged elastic fibers. When you take an egg and throw it in the frying pan, it changes its proteinaceous structure to what we call a quaternary structure. It becomes immobilized. Similarly, elastic tissue that's cooked by the sun, the ultraviolet A is not gonna be that slinky anymore. It's just gonna sit there taking up space and not allowing our treatments to do as well. For that reason, my patients undergoing non-invasive skin tightening treatments might benefit by making sure that they take enough vitamin C, which is needed for collagen production. Believe it or not, there are still cases out there of scurvy. So one vitamin C or two of the 500 milligrams a day separated out. I like one in the morning, one at night for two weeks prior to undergoing the treatment and continuing for a few months after. And topical elastin. The lead scientists from Skin Medica had wanted to explore and research and find something topically that might improve the elastic fibers in our dermis. And that's what elastin is. So if we help clean up those damaged elastic fibers, we'll let the body's immune system carry them away and stimulate our cells to make more elastic tissue for those two weeks prior to starting treatment, then the treatment can be used on these revved up cells to make better collagen, better elastic fibers, and possibly a better clinical result. We use restorative skin complex mostly for the face and transform for the body. So in terms of heating the dermis, because that's the principal mechanism not all, but the majority of treatments that are designed to improve collagen and elastic fibers are heating the dermis. We know that fibroblasts make more collagen when they are heated to a certain point. So we spoke about thermage. External radio frequency is also in thermi smooth. Again, no downtime. Thermi tight is the minimally invasive procedure. High intensity focused ultrasound, old therapy, which first came out several years ago, followed by soft wave. I use both. I use both together many times. Laser resurfacing can cause tightening, but to do that, we're really looking at downtime, both carbon dioxide and erbium, whether fractional or fully ablative, meaning the rays and fractional don't treat 100% of the area. So there's quicker downtime versus ablative, everything fully ablative, everything is treated. It's a wound that takes longer to heal with more risk. And then we have micro needling. You can buy a micro needle device on Amazon, use at home, but 
it's not very deep. It's not gonna penetrate into the dermis. They couldn't sell an item legally that would do that at home. That has to be in a doctor's office. Not even an esthetician should be able to do microneedling that penetrates into the dermis. But we use radio frequency that is injected along those microneedles. And I'll show you that. That's in both the Genius and Morpheus A. Genius is the newer version of Infini from Neutronic. Several times, maybe four or five or six times every couple of weeks, and it doesn't hurt, there's no downtime. They get up, leave, and can go right back to work. And this is an internal temperature at the end of the device, so we know the exact temperature at the skin surface. The radio frequency is being delivered through the device, through the epidermis, which is the top layer of skin, into the dermis where our collagen is. As it gains warmth and heat, it can tighten as well. So we have increased production of collagen and tightening of connective tissue. After the treatment is done, the skin is somewhat pink. That fades within minutes. And when they get up, we wipe off the gel. If they like to put some makeup on, they can. Certainly sunscreen. And off they go. So that was Thermi Smooth. Subtle improvement, but with no downtime. And we can do Thermi Smooth every week, every two weeks. It's a great treatment to do right before a social function. A couple of days before, it helps plump up the skin. And to go from this laxity to this with no downtime is amazing. Not everyone responds as well. Remember, though. Thermage mentioned was external radio frequency. So tell me why you're contemplating thermage for your belly. I have two kids, the big H spread in between. So I've had nine and a half years between my pregnancies. And I got back into shape very quickly after both of them, particularly the second. And I work out and train quite a bit, but just seeing that over the past couple months, my stomach just didn't look as taut as it was. The muscles were very strong, but the skin wasn't coordinating with the muscle structure. Where on your belly do you feel that is the worst? Um, right around the belly button area. Mm -hmm. And particularly what I didn't like was sitting down in a bathing suit. It just, as I explained, it looked like a sharp hay puppies. Do you, mind, do you mind sitting down right now? I take a look. Now, the, the just, issue- mm -hmm. just feels like uh, There really is no downtime. If you were wearing a bikini, you could wear a bikini literally in an hour after the ink comes off wow. because it's not red and swollen and blistering. You're not having skin resurfacing. This right. is deep tissue. The other thing that's important to know with the mush, and you discussed this in your consultation, is that it hurts. Right. And we can't put you to sleep because we need your feedback. Okay. We ask you to tell us on a scale of one to four what number it is. If it's a two, we're fine. If it's really getting to be a three, that's all right. But we don't want high threes and fours. Right. Thermage uses external radio frequency delivered to the skin. It's not invasive. It takes approximately one hour, depending on which body sites we're treating. And people can leave and immediately go back to the gym or their daily functions. We just treated the left thigh. So it's showing 35 degrees centigrade and 31 degrees centigrade on the other side that was not yet treated. So that's a big difference from just an external treatment. We can see here on this patient, I had done thermage on the uh, excuse me, I'll therapy on the forehead and thermage on the upper eyelid skin. Eyelid is from the eyelashes to the eyebrow. This preceptal eyelid was treated and we see now much more 
exposure of her upper lid. It helps open it up. A plastic surgeon can do better than this for sure, but not everyone wants. Surgery. Today we're talking about Technic. The technical devices such as the cell phone that we're using constantly during the day and our head is down, we've developed horizontal lines. But we're now seeing those horizontal lines more in pictures, video conferencing, Zoom, FaceTime, and we don't like what we see. So how is it that we can improve these lines on the neck? Radio frequency is delivered through these insulated needles into the dermis to induce more collagen. Again, the downtime is minimal. Some people could bruise, some people might have a little swelling, redness. The average downtime is not more than two days, but there are some patients where they will notice either the bruising or swelling for even up to two weeks. But the majority of people are very satisfied with a quick downtime. ultrasound is actually shown on a monitor for the physician as the physician delivers the energy to the patient's deep tissues in the face. The collagen that they have in the dermis and in the infrastructure then tightens. This is also a stimulus for more production of collagen. And over six months after the treatment, there's further tightening and lifting. The gel of the lower cheek that starts to hang over the jaw as we age can also lift as a result of the alt therapy. So this was alt therapy, the high intensity ultrasound that came out many years ago. And it goes four and a half millimeters, three millimeters deep and 1.5. So it goes up to about a quarter inch deep. However, instead of the 1.5 more shallow part, I then transition over to the soft wave form of high intensity ultrasound. So this is a patient who had all therapy and we see in the smile fold here, significant softening. I'm Dr. Ron Shelton here at the Laser and Skin Surgery Center in New York, introducing soft wave. Soft wave is a high intensity ultrasound designed for facial, skin, neck, abdomen, loose skin, tightening. No downtime. It takes anywhere from a half hour to an hour to do treatment. And you go back to work or home, you can exercise right away. So please see us for a consultation. <laughs> This is just showing from the company how SoftWave, as well as all therapy, induces heat and then forms new collagen. That's what they're showing here. The difference is how SoftWave lays down their pulses. It's a little bit more homogenous, a little more intense at that one and a half millimeter deep layer, which is where most of our dermis is underneath the epidermis. And that's what we're really focusing on for most individuals. We use the L-therapy with the monitor to focus exactly where the deeper collagen planes called fascia are so that we're not just treating blindly into the fat layer. We don't want to treat the fat. We want to maintain volume of the face. So here is a very nice improvement with SoftWave. We see a minimal but still significant elevation for their jowl and a very nice improvement of their neck. 
But as I said, I've been doing a combination of all therapy and software, which is, I believe, not that common elsewhere. I'm using the all therapy with a monitor, target the deeper structures, and then use the soft wave on top. And my patients who've had initially all therapy and then came back years later and did both have noticed a better improvement doing both. And I think to go from here to here is very significant. Thermitite is injectable radio frequency, radio frequency energy that heats the skin and causes contraction of the connective tissue and also creates the body's response by developing collagen for as much as a year and a half after the procedure. All of this helps tighten and lift sagging skin. When I performed Thermitite, I first numbed the skin with local anesthetic. Then without cutting, just through a needle insertion, I'm able to deliver a small rod. It's about the size of pencil graphite in its diameter. And this rod is placed underneath the skin in the fatty and connective tissue layers. The radio frequency energy then heats this tissue. And what's great with this device is that I have an internal temperature probe that tells me real time the exact temperature of where I am. Also, we have a very advanced external infrared camera that shows us the skin temperature. So with both the internal and external monitoring of temperature, Thermitite is a safe procedure. This is just showing the upper arms. The prior showed the thigh. But again, minimally invasive, swelling, bruising, possible numbness. And it really takes six months to a year for maximal improvement. To do an arm lift surgically requires usually a long scar down the back of the arm. The surgeon could instead, if possible, work in the armpit for the scar, but sometimes the skin relaxes despite the surgery. So non-invasive has a place for the right individual. And when patients come to me in consultation, again, I try to separate the fact from the fiction and quite honestly tell them if they're a candidate for non-invasive treatment. So this is showing with Thermitite a really beautiful result that would mimic a facelift this is one of the better results. Not all patients will get as great a result. So there we have it. I, I ran through rather quickly because we did have the technical issue and I wanted to leave time for questions and answers. Thank you so much, Dr. Shelton. That was great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take your screen sharing off so that we can get to the questions and answers. So for everyone that is still on, if you'd like to post any questions that you have into the chat or the Q&A, we will get to as many of them as we can right now. So here is the first one. Um, we, um, I'd like to hear what you have to say about loose skin. Uh, it's been hanging around for quite a while. It's a problem. <laughs> and I think I covered as much as I could with loose skin and the different treatments, um, whether it's radio frequency or microneedling radio frequency, these treatments that I've shown today can definitely help a lot of individuals. Great. So once the cellulite is removed, does the skin have to be tightened? If someone has a combination of sagging loose skin along with cellulite, which is not uncommon in the thighs, I have actually seen skin tightening with the Rasonic and improvement of cellulite at the same time. But no, many patients will need separate treatment for their loose skin. It's not looser after treatment of cellulite though, not looser than it was before. Got it, thank you. So how about cool sculpting as an effective treatment compared to what you've reviewed today? Well, we really didn't discuss fat reduction at all tonight. Uh, I mentioned liposuction just for the utility of trying to break up those collagen bands and cellulite, but cool sculpting is non-invasive freezing of the fat to reduce fat volume. Some patients can get skin tightening. I saw from a colleague of mine treating bra fat on the back and the skin improved 
in probably collagen production from that. But cool sculpting predominantly targets the fat layer. So we would not utilize that as a primary treatment for skin tightening. Got it. And not for cellulite. Got it. So I know you went over this a little bit, but apparently one more question still. What's the best modality to correct jowls or the mid-face laxity? Facelift. <laughs> and if we don't want cutting and we don't want surgery? I, for a non-invasive, depending on the age of the person, the thickness of their skin, their anatomy, I'd probably be doing the combination of all therapy and soft wave, high intensity ultrasound. There are times that people are so adamant against surgery, they really are an excellent candidate for surgery based on their anatomy. They don't want surgery and we can throw the kitchen sink at them. That could mean the combination of all therapy and soft wave, microneedling with radio frequency, not done the same time. Microneedling and radio frequency, by the way, is usually three monthly treatments. So I could do a microneedling, wait two weeks, do the old therapy soft wave, two weeks later, do the second microneedling, a month later, the third. Then we could even do, which we didn't discuss, minimally invasive suture lifting, insulift thread lifting, which is different than just threading, where the thread is put in, you're hoping you're producing more collagen. This is suture that has its own barbs. They dissolve over time, but it helps physically anchor the skin upwardly. You can do all of those. And let's not forget filler. Fillers injected into the key compartments where we've lost fat in the face and structural support along the jawline can actually help. And there are patients who have significant jowls that I will inject filler in front of the jowl, behind the chin to erase that valley and behind the jowl and the corner of the jawline and build up the corner of the jawline and make a straighter jaw. That can all help. Of course, again, temporary. Got it. But if someone comes to you, I'm sure you will be truthful if you think a facelift or neck lift is more is preferable. Uh, all the time. I want my patients to get the best treatment. I want them to be happy. You know, in our center, I, I am so honored to work with the physicians that are here. We're all ethical, academically enriched, and we will provide our patients with the best advice. So what would you tell a patient um, that you would recommend for under chin fat removal? For fat removal, again, none of these treatments that I've really discussed today will work, but we talked about cool sculpting. There is an applicator uh, for the Cool Mini with cool sculpting that with their newest generation is producing good improvement. I was disenchanted when they first came out with their neck device, but the new and improved is truly improved. Uh, of course, there's liposuction. There's thermitite that we mentioned, which is the internal radio frequency. All of those can be used. And there's Kybella injections. Kybella is bile salt. We have bile in our body secreted by the liver and gallbladder into our intestines to dissolve fat. They've purified it. We inject it and it dissolves fat. It's often three, four, five, or six treatments, six weeks apart. And they're swelling right after the Kybella. And as long as the patients are aware, they can deal with it. But I call it the jello jiggle because you move your head and it's wobbling a little bit. That's a great analogy for a kite ball. I haven't heard that before. So how about microneedling without radio frequency? There's definitely a role to play for microneedling that does not utilize radio frequency. In fact, when microneedling first came out, uh, a colleague of mine that I hold in high esteem was enamored by the vertical lip lines by doing this microneedling. Again, different than the at-home version, going deeper into the dermis. But with microneedling and radio frequency, the results are better. So do you have any experience with the Genius microneedling RF or what brand of that's, device? 
That is what I use almost exclusively. Uh, I had used Lutronix Infini initially. When Genius came aboard, the computer analysis of the pulses was far better. It flows very well. It lets me know if the particular pulse was not really registered because it measures impedance and physical properties we don't need to get into about electricity right now. Um, and I like that very much. I do also use Morpheus 8, uh, but I have not used E prime or some of the other uh, microneedling devices out there. I really like that when Luchonic came out, they were very focused on insulated needles to preserve the epidermis. The current of the radio frequency goes down to exactly the layer we want. Very interesting. You keep bringing up different lasers that you have. How many do you have in, in LSSC? Uh, we have about 100 different devices. That's amazing. So what is your opinion on threading since you brought it up? Do you think it's too invasive? No, I think threading uh, done by an expert um, can really produce utility of, of producing more collagen. And we know what more collagen induces. In fact, I have to tell you that we have good articles talking about filler itself, injecting filler, which as it's dissolving and the body is metabol metabolically active, uh, dissolving that filler, that it's generating more collagen. Then the question was, well, is it just the needle track going through and inducing collagen? For the last few years, I've been doing a technique that I call the lattice approach, like a trellis. And I dilute some of my hyaluronic acid filler with an anesthetic, and I will thread it horizontally, vertically in cross hatching, re establishing a greater amount of hyaluronic acid in the dermis. It can make those more than subtle fine lines improve literally before my patient leaves the room. There can certainly be bruising with that because there's a lot of needle punctures. It's a very thin needle. Mm -hmm. And I saw two patients in the last two months that had not been treated by me, one not treated for two and a half years that still had improvement, and another one close to two years. We know that the filler is gone. In that plane, the filler is gone. And they still had significant improvement based on photographic analysis. So that is new collagen production. Very interesting. Okay, we have a few more questions. Does Morpheus 8 produce longer term or cumulative results? Is it better than other options? Well, if you're comparing it to other devices that produce, you know, um, microneedling to radio frequency, I'm not so sure that that's been studied. In my clinical experience, the results, once somebody obtains some tightening, they're going to maintain it as long as they had it with one device or another. Uh, Skin tightening, we find, is better with a high-intensity ultrasound than microneedling and radio frequency. Microneedling radio frequency is great for acne scars, fine lines, and slight tightening. All right. Uh, what is the best treatment for vertical lip lines? Laser resurfacing, like a second-degree burn, is the gold standard. However, there is a risk of scarring. There's a lot of downtime for a solid two weeks and frequent follow-up way after that, sometimes multiple lasers to reduce the redness. It's a big procedure. And when I get through discussing with most patients and show pictures of the goriness for the first several days, many patients elect not to have it. So what do we do? For some people, believe it or not, that purse their lip a lot, provided that the lip hasn't aged and become so low, elongated, that it's blocking all the teeth when they smile, we can do minute drops of Botox to minimize the pursing, and the lines can get better. Microneedling with radio frequency is a very good treatment for that. And then lastly was the lattice approach of the dilute filler, which I think works beautifully well there. 
Great. So tell us, what do you think about all these facial muscle exercises? People are talking about face yoga and jade rollers and all these things now. Can you help us you know, spell the, the myths? I think the jade roller can help with lymphatic drainage. In terms of the facial exercises, I, I know I have one patient who swears by it. She is elderly. She's been doing it for years and she looks great. Um, I, I don't remember reading a well-done scientifically controlled study looking at facial exercises, but I know that there are devices out there that are trying to stimulate the facial contraction during the treatment to help effect such an improvement. So there's probably something to it, but I don't have enough experience with that. Got it. And what are the risks of the erbium laser? And can you ever be too old to do it? Our skin does heal differently. Fortunately, the face is more resilient than the lower body. But yes, if we're elderly, despite any other history of smoking, diabetes, et cetera, we may not heal as well. And the best healer, the most useful, healthy patient out there that takes great care of their skin, there is a risk of scarring, whether it's depressed scar, raised scar, long-term redness, dark brown coloration, this can occur. And if it gets secondarily infected because they didn't take good care of themselves, that can scar. Some people have been prone to um, some people have been prone to um, I'm sorry, Risa, I got distracted there. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. Your, your um, for erbium laser. Yeah. So they're prone to cold sores. They've had them through their life. Well, we know that stress can bring on a cold sore. The issue is if you get one cold sore in a wound that's treated with laser, the whole skin is raw, that one cold sore can multiply to many and that can cause scarring. So we usually put those patients who are undergoing ablative laser resurfacing on an antiviral medication. God. Okay, last question. Is it true that ice rollers can cause capillaries to burst? And would that apply to a jade roller as well? Again, I'm not aware of the science. Uh, pressure might induce such injury, but we have to realize that there's a difference between temporary bruising, which on the face goes away in two and a half weeks, versus stimulation of new blood vessels. When there are thin capillary blood vessels in the superficial dermis and transparent through the epidermis, those are functioning. And could they have been caused by temperature change or pressure? I'm not sure, but think about Retin-A, which is a great medication for photo damage. It does help increase, increase our blood flow. So it doesn't mean that just because we have some increased blood flow that it's a bad thing either. But we do have 595 yellow pulse dye V-beam laser that can very easily treat facial redness. Got it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Shelton. We've gotten to the hour mark, but a couple of people are saying thank you. They appreciate your knowledge and candor. Thank you so much. Really I, I really pleasure. hope you guys appreciate uh, this. I know Dr. Shelton, you know, it takes a lot of effort to go put this together to really lay it all out for everyone and explain it. So thank you so much, Dr. Shelton. So welcome, Risa. And for people that are watching today, what's the good next step? And if they are out of town, can they still see you and have a consultation? I don't do televisits, but I am more than happy to see patients. Uh, in the past, we've allowed patients to state that they've seen the webinar so that they can come in and not charge them a consultation fee. Ooh, hot tip for everyone. But there might be a test. They have to answer the questions correctly. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Shelton. Thank you so thank much you, to Lisa. everyone that tuned in today. And we wish thank you, you a good evening. Have a Bye. good night. Stay safe.